Well, good morning again. For the sake of the CD. It's all right, brother. Did y'all have a good week? A lot of smiles this morning. I take it y'all did. Even Miss Jancy smiled. Lisa? She don't No, it's good to be back with you this morning. Got a few faces missing. They're on our hearts. And our prayers are with them. The Lord will bring them back to us again. If you would, go to Second Samuel, chapter 15. We're going to move down a verse. We're going to move to verse 12 this morning. Uh, last time we dealt with simplicity. And uh, boy, I tell you what, that's worked on me. The things I don't want to do are the simple things. Yeah. That seems to be the hardest things. You would think it would be the complicated things, but the simple things. But this morning I want to talk to you about betrayal. Betrayal here. Verse 12, And Absalom sent for Ahithophel the Gilonite, David's counselor from his city, even from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong, for the people increased continually with Absalom. And notice here he sent for Ahithophel. Why do you think he went? Why do you think Ahithophel went? Well, there's some history here. Ahithophel is Bathsheba's grandpa. See, um, there's reference to that in a, in a few chapters ahead here. His son was named Eliam. And Eliam in verse 3 of chapter 11 said had a daughter named Bathsheba. Bathsheba. So here Ahithophel gets a call from Absalom. Do y'all think Ahithophel knew what was going on? Now he's David's counselor. I want you to think about this. So it's, a, it's his job to be have the pulse of the people in it. So he can advise David. So when Absalom called him here, he had a choice to make. Answer the call or stay in Jerusalem. Well, what did he do? I believe he might have been bitter. What do you think? See, Ahithophel is going to help mastermind the rebellion against David. In chapter 17 here, he, told, he tells Absalom, he says, let me go and I'll kill the king myself and I'll bring the rest of the people back with me. David's once true friend and counselor now defecting to the enemy. I mean, that's what we call it now is defecting. But it's a betrayal. Betrayal. You ever been betrayed? I have too. If you look here, there's a lot of parallels here between Ahithophel and Judas. There are. Ahithophel hanged himself in the end here. We'll, we'll get to that eventually. And so did Judas. But why? I want to ask you something this morning. Are you, are you harboring any bitterness or um, discontentment? Yeah. <laughs> Bitterness or discontentment that you could use as a crutch to quit, to answer the call. Listen, the devil will be dialing that phone in the morning. Clay. Clay, things didn't go your way. See, bitterness, that, listen, I'll tell you, I fight it. We all do. We've all had something the Lord did not do our way. I told you a few weeks ago about not being able to have children. I fight that bitterness at times. Not every day. But every once in a while, 
But see, Ephesians tells us not let the sun go down on our wrath. And in the next verse it says don't give place to the devil. What will that do? See, it's summertime out here right now and the grass is growing. And about every three weeks I have to get the old pump sprayer out, Harold, and get the Roundup out and get rid of them bitter weeds. Keep them in check. And that's what this, listen, I get up every morning and I look at this word to round up what grew from the day before. This can happen to any of us. See, we read that about Judas and we think, I wouldn't do that. But then if God don't heal one of our loved ones, or Brother Wigglejaw don't shake my hand when I go through the back door back there, then I've got a reason I'm going to stay home. I'm done with it. What did Jesus ask His disciples in John 6? Will ye also go away? See, they wanted a positive Messiah. They didn't want somebody that was going to deal with sin and go to the cross. Simple, isn't it? Painful. This is a death, like you said last week, brother. See, I'm tempted to betray the Lord every day. I'm tempted to betray people every day. Don't give place to bitterness. He's, he's succumbed here to it. And it's, it's a shame. Mark Twain said, Anger is an acid that can do more harm to the vessel in which it's stored than to anything on which it is poured. What you angry about this morning? What you angry about? See, we talked about with Joseph. He let that stuff go with his brothers. Forgiveness. This goes back to forgiving your enemies. You heard about the preacher that preached the sermon to forgive your enemies. Halfway through, he asked if everybody had forgiven their enemies. Only half the crowd raised their hand. He backed up, started over, went again. <laughs> Halfway through again, he asked, he said, does everybody in here forgive your enemies? 80% of the crowd this time raised their hand. Well, he re-emphasized one more time, forgive your enemies. He asked again, he said, have you all forgive your enemies? Everybody but one old lady raised their hand. He said, Miss Jones, why won't you forgive your enemies? She said, I don't have any enemies. He said, would you come down front, you're an example to us, and tell us how you've lived all these years and you don't have no enemies. She came down front and faced the congregation. She said, I'll tell you how I don't have no enemies. I outlived all the old hags. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's clay. I'll just outlive them. Then I can claim I got them. Revenge. Go to Matthew chapter 26. I believe Ahithophel at one time was David's friend and David's true friend. And he let this get between them. And it ended up costing him his life. Listen, bitterness will kill you. It'll dry you up. I think Proverbs says it's, it rots the bones. And I talked about the parallel, but Judas was never sincere. Judas was never sincere. What was Judas about? Money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Why? What does money do? It empowers you. It makes you, Listen, we all want to rise... Ascend up to the throne. And if I had money, whatever I wanted, there wouldn't be any obstacles. I want to be God. The rich man. But what do I want to be? I want to be rich. Wendy, I'm pitiful, ain't I? <laughs> Depraved, brother. Just like that prayer you prayed. That's, our, that's it. This flesh. This flesh. Let's pick this up here in uh, verse 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head, and he sat at meat, as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose 
is this waste. For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Y'all ever had indignation at something that happened? You ever been mad about something that happened? See, indignation is when your anger is flared up because you thought you something didn't go wasn't your way or it wasn't fair. And Jesus explained it to them here. Jesus understood it. He said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. Now to them this was a waste. And did they name Judas there that was had indignation? Did he single Judas out in the scripture? He said they all had indignation. And that, listen, what we see going on in this world out here, does it vex you a little bit? Just a little bit? Does foxy news aggravate you a little bit? Do you feel a little indignation that God don't just zap them? Do you feel like this is a waste? Hmm? Boy, it's getting close to home for me. I begin to feel indignation here. And what happens after this? Let's pick this up in verse 14. Then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priests and saith unto them, What will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted him with, with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. I believe Ahithophel was just waiting his time. I believe that opportunity was presented. If we ain't careful, let me tell you something, if you ain't careful, you'll give place to the devil here. And this will be your, you'll find something that will be your crutch and you'll betray all this. Demas hath forsaken me having loved this present world. Do you think it pained Paul to write that a little bit? Do you think it hurt him? Yeah, I think he had a godly jealousy there that had been been betrayed. What is there out there to love? Y'all, have y'all looked around lately? I mean, I enjoy life. We went last night to a wedding for some friends of ours, and we had a good time. But y'all, I don't want to stay here anymore. I'm beginning to long for the other side of Jordan where we'll live forever and not be sick, not witness death, not witness all of this mess. We're pilgrims on a journey. So don't let the devil, don't give place to the devil with indignation and bitterness. All three of the, all three of the factors I mentioned about Jesus not being the positive Messiah they want, Judas wanting to get what he wanted, Ahithophel, they were all discontent. And I've spoke before about discontentment. Discontentment will cause you problems. If you're not thankful, if we're not thankful for what God's give us. If we're not thankful, I got to thinking this week, why did God put me here in Waycross, Georgia? What is my purpose here? Am I doing, am I doing what I'm supposed to do? See, Judas wanted his will to be done. His disciples, that's why they had indignation here. They wanted their will done. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will. Boy, it's easy to say that, ain't it? Yeah. Until it comes time to do it. Then it gets a little hard. Then, you know, when I don't get my way, my indignation flares up. Lord, we could have done this with that. How dare you do it your way? Yeah, that's me. That's that depravity raising its ugly head. That's why Paul had to get out the roundup every day. And he said, I die daily. Listen, let's love one another. Let's not give place to indignation. Let's not give place to bitterness. Don't be discontent with as John Smith says, and my wife has become a champ at echo in this around the house. It's what the Lord has for us. And he ain't here today so I can talk about him. I'd whip him, but I had to gnaw on his ankles. He's bigger than me. Listen, the coming weeks going to have, there are going to be trials and tribulations, and things are not going to go our way. Melissa was talking on the way here. It's amazing how we don't know from day to day 
We don't know what tomorrow holds. But he already knows what tomorrow holds. Yes. See, we want to live by sight. I don't want to live by faith. My flesh wants to know what it's going to have yeah. and what it ain't going to have. And so what happens? I begin to let that indignation build up. And I want to run down and say, hey, priests, what will you give me for him? I'll begin to look for an opportunity to get out of this. I hope y'all never have to say, Clay hath forsaken us, having loved this God-awful present world. I love y'all. May the Lord bless your soul this morning.